Hi everyone, thanks for joining me watching In Deep on the Delta. It's summertime out here. We're throwing a lot of topwater baits and the baits that we're throwing subsurface, a lot of them, they're moving a lot faster. Every week I have questions on why are fish missing my baits. That's what we're going to talk about today and we're going to really focus in on the fact that fish don't always see your baits the way that we see them. We know that fish focus in on, on um, on their prey through their lateral line they can hear they can feel vibration they can hear uh, that's one of the ways that that they track down their prey I don't care what predator it is as long as they have eyes the eyes are their number one asset when it comes to tracking down bait so we're going to talk about bass we're going to talk about their eyes and how they see I'm going to take about two minutes to go over some science-based information on how a bass eyes see once you have that information you're going to start to really focus in and think about some of the things that you've seen out here as you're fishing for bass especially if you're a topwater guy and you see bass come up and miss things or you know they're they're not they're not swallowing them or you think they just miss them well there's reasons for that and once you know how a bass sees things you're going to really understand you know some of the things that will help you to start making decisions to make those bass that are missing actually hit so let's talk about bass the first thing we have to do is talk about the placement of their Eyes. I've got a replica here and we both we all know that a bass has one eye on each side of uh, of its um, of its body they're not either they're located at the head and they're up, up at the I'll say the top quarter of their head now you guys know that a bass's head is not like a brick it's kind of um, arrow shaped and for that reason uh, their eyesight they can have both 2D and 3D vision. So let's take a look at this eye here. They have about uh, they have a 180 degree view of vision or or um, a sight on each side. So now the way that that 180 degree arc works is this eye here because it's it's sitting about like this on the fish's head. Their 180 degree. Um, a circle of vision is from about where my arm is on this fish and it goes back to about right here. Now if you're on this side, this eye is going out this way and it's coming 180 degrees back and that's their field of vision. So each side they, they can see out to about 40 feet, 40 to 50 feet scientifically based. Uh, I don't know how they figure this out, but this is what I've, I've gathered. And this is one eye or monocular vision, and it is a far-sighted vision. They don't have real clear vision. They could see out to about 40 or 50 feet, but it's blurry. That's 2D vision. As the fish looks forward, and you have a 180 degree arc here and here, directly in front of them they have 3D vision because they can see out of both eyes. With that 3D vision it's nearsighted and this is how they can come into a bait. They can only see about a foot in front of them and at that point if they can focus in on a bait and get within a foot of it and, and look at it, that's when they can really see what it is and tell if they want to eat it a lot of times. So think about that. Also think about they cannot see what's directly behind them, they can't see what's under them. This is a reason why if anything ever comes behind a bass or you throw a lure and it happens to hit behind a bass, it takes right. off. Let's talk a little bit more about why fish are so leery of things coming behind them. They can't see what's back there. It's just like if you were in uh, after dark or in a seedy part of town, you're walking down the street, you can't see what's back there. If you hear anything, you're on high alert. You want to turn around and check it out. Well, fish can't do that. So anytime that something drops in behind them or something is is chasing a fish, this fish is going to take off and it's not going to uh, it's not going to stick around. So obviously, we all know if you're going to see feeding fish and you're going to try to or cruising fish and you're going to try to uh, uh, fish for them, you want that bait to be falling in front of them and probably far enough in front of them where it doesn't spook them, where they can hear it and come up to it and right. look at it. When we talk about fishing 
fishing in tight to cover and in tight to tules and things, a lot of times these fish will, they'll root right through the tules and maybe uh, they'll get through them and, and they'll get there and let's say my, my hand's a bunch of tule, or this arm's a bunch of tule fronds, they'll come in and they'll wedge in there and here's, here's where they'll stop. Maybe there's a little open water here. The reason is, that's just like if you're a mafia guy, and I don't know how many mafia guys are watching this, but you come into a restaurant, you always sit with your back to the wall because you don't know who's in there that's, that wants to do you harm. So having a fish that is tucked in to tight to cover, they're putting their back to the wall. These fish can be so close to structure with their backs to the wall or their back to the structure. That's when you got to get that bait in there as close as you can no more than 12 inches because remember if this fish is sitting out here and you drop a bait within six inches and it drops down it can see it with its two eyes and 3d vision and it can tell if it wants to eat it if it comes out more than three or four feet actually more than 12 inches this fish can't see it if it's straight in front of it now if it comes to the side the fish will see it and it'll turn toward it towards that bait if it wants it it'll come up towards closer to it and then it'll feed on it or it'll, it'll uh, reject it. So think about that. I also want you to think about, you guys that do a lot of bed fishing, how this corresponds with that. You may have, let's say my hand is a, a bed. It's, it's springtime, the uh, bass are bedding. Here is your bait. It's sitting right in the bed. And let's just say we've got this fish, it's sitting right here. If this fish is interested in getting that bait, either eating it or getting it off the bed, what happens? It's here, the bait falls down, and it's on the bed, it immediately turns just like this. And if it's interested, the next thing it'll do is it'll do this. You guys know what I'm talking about. Once it does that, you better hold on because what's going to happen, he's going to be in this position, he knows the bait's here, he's got 2D, 2D vision, he doesn't see it real clearly, he turns around, he gets to about here, he's got 3D vision, he could see it with both eyes, Hmm. puts in this posture so he can really see that bait. He's about 12 inches from it. If he wants it, bam! One big wag of the tail and that thing has it. Or he's going to look at it and he's going to go, no, nah, it's not bothering me. I'm not going to eat it. He's going to turn just like this. He's going to sit there. And you're going to throw in. You're going to throw in. It's going to come fall in here and the fish is going to move over. It's going to fall in front of him. He doesn't see it. Falls behind him. Fish takes off think about that. I want to talk about day and nighttime vision. This is especially for you guys that fish that change of light bite. And I'm going to read this pretty much, not verbatim, but we'll go over the important stuff. So, bass do have the ability to see at night. They actually have two types of vision. It's photo phototopic vision, which they use during the day, and scototopic vision, which they use during the night. Now, bass have rods and cones in their eye. You guys remember that from high school science. I don't, but I know a lot of you guys do. It's almost like humans, but they don't work quite the same. Humans have uh, eyelids that they can close to block out bright sunlight. Fish don't have that, but they do have the ability and certain aspects of their eyes that are light sensitive. They can uh, hide certain certain parts of those cones so that they can adapt to either sunlight or moonlight. Now, the change from dark to light or light to dark, this is important. I want you to all listen to this because it's very, very important. There was a study conducted that led scientists to believe that largemouth bass need about one hour to become fully dark adapted. Think about that, especially when you're out here and you're fishing the change of light. You get out here at 5 o'clock, nothing happens till about 7 when the sun starts going down, then the bite starts, and then it's on. From 7 to 9 o'clock, you're catching fish. Now, most of these fish, it starts off with small fish. As it gets into the bite, a lot of times we'll get some bigger fish in there. And then about 9 o'clock when the sun when is really down and it starts getting dark, the bite just stops abruptly. Think about this. The reason it stops abruptly is because a lot of these fish that were biting between 7 and 9 during the daylight, their eyes are starting to change to nighttime vision. And according to science, it takes about an hour for those fish to get adapted to, uh, for their vision to get adapted to the dark. 
So the first thing you should take out of this is if you are just fishing the night bite and leaving, as soon as that bite dies, you should probably get the heck out of there because it's going to take about an hour before they start biting again. Now if you're going to fish all night like I do a lot of times, as soon as that bite dies, you know what I do. I start fishing for big fish. But here's the deal with big fish and fishing for through the night. Number one, the fish that are biting in that window of opportunity are not your big humongous toads. You can catch some big fish there in the evening. You can catch five, six, seven pounders. But if you're looking for an eight, nine, ten pounder, they're going to bite right after dark for a couple of reasons. Those big giant fish out here, they don't like competing with the smaller fish in that seven to nine uh, time slot. A lot of fish in the shallows, they're pushing bait around, the balls of bait get broken up, uh, the balls of bait are, are leery so they're jittering around. The big fish don't like to come in and compete with that and chase the bait. So what they do, or what you'll do, is you'll catch a bunch of nice fish, as soon as that bite dies, it's over. If you're not going to fish till dark you, or uh, through the night, you still want to fish for about 15 minutes as soon as it gets dark. What you want to do is you take your smaller baits off, you put a big, big uh, swim bait or a wake bait on, and you fish for one big fish. And it's going to be in that 15, 20, 25 minutes as the sun goes down and it gets dark. The reason why the smaller fish go back into the weed beds, they're letting their eyes adjust. The bigger fish, which are smarter, they're going to come out and they know that they have a short window of opportunity. Their eyes tend to adapt quicker according to science as they get older. They also have better lateral, uh, uh, better control of how they deal with vibrations from lateral lines. They're better hunters with low light and they know that they can come out and maybe get a last morsel before dark. That's why you want to be out there and you don't want to have your you know, smaller baits on toads and maybe walking baits, things like that. You want to have a big bait on because you're hoping that one of these big humongous fish is going to come out and they're going to make one pass around you know, an island or a point or whatever it is and if that big bait is there at that time they're going to come up and they're going to grab that thing. So think about that. Now if you're not staying out till midnight or two in the morning or you're not staying overnight, fish that 15 minutes and go home. If you're going to stay out all night, fish that 15 minutes, sit down, take a break, have a bite to eat, and then start fishing about 10:30, 11 o'clock, and then you can fish through the night after the fish is, after the fish have had their eyes adapt to the dark. Another thing you, you should think about, if they're missing big walking baits at, or walking baits that are moving more than about four to six inches, think about the fish coming up, uh, tracking in on the bait, getting here, looking at the bait, and then having the bait move here thinking, okay, I'm going to hit it as soon as it moves again. It goes like this, the fish comes up, and it misses the bait altogether. We've all seen that. What happens is, is that bait comes out of vision, out of the, the, the 3D vision, which is just in front of it, they don't see it. So once they miss it, they're going to have to come around and turn around and come back after it, or turn around to the outside, track it again, and come back. So if you are having problems in the evening when uh, you're having fish come up and miss it, if you're throwing a big walking bait, you want to slow that walking bait down instead of making it walk a foot or so to each side, make it walk a few inches to each side. Or put on maybe a bubble walker or a popper, something that's not moving from side to side. That's going to allow these fish to come in and let's just say this was a popper. Pop, pop, pop. As soon as this thing tracks it, it's got 3D vision on it. It's a foot away. Pop, 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 pop. It's a straight shot to come and hit that bait. The bait's not going like this where the fish has to move back and forth to see it. So think about uh, all that stuff that we've, we've just talked about. I don't want to go into too much more detail because I think once you know the science behind how these fish see, you're going to start asking yourself questions and, and giving yourself answers to things that have happened in the past. And as you get more experienced as an angler, you're going to be able to kind of uh, just have one more arrow in your quiver to help you decide on maybe the bait or the color you're using. Again, if these fish are coming up and they're looking at a bait and they're moving away from it, you've got to do something different. Change the color of the bait, change the size of the bait, or change the cadence of the bait. And you guys, we all make these um, decisions 
uh, day to day and the better fishermen seem to make the right decisions and knowing how these fish uh, see and how they visualize everything it's going to help you to make more of those right decisions so I'm going to go out and I'll try to catch another fish or two today it's going to get warm then I'm going to go back in and have some lunch I want you guys to go out there and start fishing catch some fish send me a report and uh, you know if you see me on the water say hi if not till next video good luck <laughs>